And welcome back, ladies and gents, to the Face It Challenger Invitational's number two, Grand Finale Game 2. It's a bit of a mouthful. It I is. am Vince Metis Hill. This guy next to me is James Stress O'Leary. And as we said, we're into game number two in the Picks and Bands. Yeah, let's get things underway. We already have four bands out already. Lulu this time will not make a, an appearance in this game. Not a massive surprise. No, that was. Uh, it's a pretty strong pick. Uh, neither will Cassidy in this game either, although it wasn't in the previous game. Uh, really, that Lulu is the only adjustment so far. I wonder what that's going to let through. Elise is likely to be the last ban here, but what does that let through? Pantheon is available for uh, to pick if that does in fact become Elise. Lee Sin, Lee Sin. would be available for Koo. Uh, Morden did a really nice job last game playing that champion. Gragas Ooh, so also. both are going to be available. Yeah, both going to be available here. Elise. And Elise. Ah, yes, of course. Very, very, very strong champion. So mm -hmm. you can understand why they'd insta lock that. Elise has been banned time and time again, actually, throughout this tournament. Yeah. Pretty much every game, actually. Yeah. Um, typically, Elise is so... Uh, she Well, I, she is strong. She is strong to the point of everyone should ban her. But the thing is, every jungler plays her. It's very similar to Lee Sin, but her power is slightly higher. So mm -hmm. she's not broken to the point that, you know, anything needs to happen to the champion as such. It's just she's always going to be a strong pick because of her consistency, because of the way she gets into lane, the, the cocoon, everything, the damage, the percentage. Exactly. As you say, she, she offers pretty much everything you'd want in a jungler. And it can also be pretty tanky as well, while yeah. doing uh, quite a bit of damage with the volatile spiderlings and such. But as you can see here, again, Sivir is going to more than likely be the AD carry of choice for Yuki. He's also toyed with the idea of playing Lucian a few times last game. I think he finished around 11 and 1. So he's uh, been having a, yeah. a storm of a tournament. He, he did pretty well on Lucian last time. We'll see how he does this time on Sivir. Morden's going to go with Lee Sin again. No fear of Ku taking that Lee Sin this game, but I think that's a very uh, very good choice to go against an Elise, because Elise has a lot of early game presence, so Lee Sin kind of uh, does the same role. Yeah, definitely. And Warden played very well last game as mm. well with this character, so it's understandable why he'd go for this second time running. Played very aggressive, made uh, use of Lee Sin's strengths, which are early game dominance. Yep. That's probably going to be another Thresh. It, it is likely to be Thresh. Um, I would be surprised not to see a Thresh, although saying that uh, Leona and Annie are available, pretty much comparative in, in strength. It's kind of that triangle of, of one beats the other beats the other. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, regardless of who they pick up here, it, it kind of zones them away from maybe picking Leona unless they really want Leona, because of course, of course on Thresh you can flay away the Zenith yeah, Blade. But exactly. it, it's one of those things that they could still pick Leona up and be very, very comfortable. As you say, that flay is, is so instrumental in stopping mm. any of the Leona aggression, but it's still a good champion. Leona yeah. is still good because it offers a lot in team fights as well. Yep. Uh, we're seeing Shivana locked in on the side of SK Gaming Prime. Over on Gamers 2, they're looking to play the Renekton matchup for that. Trundle available as well, so they could put JWoww on Trundle. Um, and Trundle does very well on Shivana. We've already seen the lane swap not go the way of SK Prime. And I guess and Trundle does well against Shivana, to be honest. And it looks like that's what they're going for. I actually prefer Trundle in this situation to Renekton. Yeah, same, because Shivana does pretty decent against Renekton as well. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of double-edged sword there. And hey, JWoww played a very, very good Trundle last time around, mm -hmm. similar to Lee Sin. So they're going to have that same uh, solo lane jungle kind of synergy with these two champions. So if it doesn't work, why... Uh, if it doesn't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Is what if I was it doesn't to say. work, if it doesn't work, don't break it. break it. What? Yeah. Nice, nice one, Vince. <laughs> GG. Well, that could be something that we haven't seen all tournament long. If that gets locked in, Kale. Kale is a champion that has seen a bit of a fall off after the adjustments. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of mid laners, of course, played Kale for so very long because she was very, very strong. And then uh, they changed the the uh, AP scaling on a couple of Kale's abilities, changed the movement speed as well with uh, her heal. So I wonder whether we'll see this um, because it, Gamers 2, their last pick is going to be their mid laner. So whoever is picked here by SK Prime is is going to maybe be counter picked here. Uh, champions that are available, Oriana is also available. I think he's more consistent currently on this patch, Dan Kale. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see that locked in, but I think Kale is still a fine choice if they decided to go for it. Caitlin would make a lot of sense as well against Sivir for the reasons we mentioned yesterday. Ooh, oh, so ooh, Vane, okay. Though. Okay, Vayne. Mm. Vayne is also good against Sivir for the uh, the same reasons, actually, that Draven's quite good as well. It's difficult to block 
a lot of what Vayne throws at Sivir. The Silver Bolts procs, you can't block them. Mm -hmm. You can block the Condemn, sure, but it's, it's, you have to have pretty good reactions for that. You also can't block Tumble from Vayne. You can't block yeah. the damage that comes in. So Sivir is going to have a bit of a tough time here. Uh, should be okay for the early game because Vayne's going to have to be quite uh, scared of Annie and all the you know the stuns that she's going to bring to the table. But after that, it's going to be very There's strong. more synergy as well with the fact that they've locked in Kale. The Kale pick makes a lot more sense now yes. as well. Because yes. one of Vayne's issues in the earlier team fights, especially is you end up kind of dying sometimes. Mm -hmm. You're very weak. You can't output enough damage. Uh, you can't sustain back up either. But intervention, if you get caught, is going to be able to protect Vayne very well. And the answer to uh, Kale in this situation for Gamers 2 is going to be... Uh, Ocelot on Oriana, which, you know, I've never seen that before. No, never. Never, <laughs> never ever seen him play uh, the Oriana. And it's it's been really good with Lee Sin and Trundle, to be fair. You can just jump the, the ball on them and then get the shockwave yep. off. So uh, it's interesting composition from both teams, but fully agree with what you said about the Kale Vane. It's yeah. great synergy between those two characters. Vane... If she starts to get some items together, that intervention is going to allow him to just run rampant with the champion. Yeah, and uh, we are heading back into the lobby just for a uh, brief moment before we head into the game. Again, there have been just a couple of little bugs that yep. we've got to fix out for the players because you want to have the right runes and masteries. And it's Steve again. Steve is lagging. <laughs> <laughs> Which is six. He, he had the problems last time around as well. Yeah. I, the thing is, I don't know whether six's name is Steve or whether... Because a lot of teams have in-jokes. Um, so to let you into the mind of teams, uh, whenever the game pauses for... Or used to be Dignitas UK, they used to say that Yero's cat jumped out the window. <laughs> so maybe it's a joke that SK Gaming just say Steve lags. I see. Sorry to burst a bubble here. but Well, or maybe his name's Steve. Maybe, but... I mean, that would be coincidental. It's also the <laughs> fact that it's six that's dropping out. So, you know, yeah. it's the last one in the lobby to go back in. But we've also had uh, pretty much consistent problems with these two teams when it gets to loading in. JWoww and Ocelot DC'd in uh, the previous game. And then I think Ku also DC'd in the previous best of three that we casted. So uh, let's hope that doesn't happen again. Yeah. Thankfully, these guys are going to go through, th through the picks very, very quickly. So I don't know uh, whether that'll come back up. They banned TSM. TSM. Ah, oh dear. In before Twitch is flooded with TSM chants. Yeah. And you only love Ocelot. It'll be you only love Ocelot, though. I, I was disappointed that wasn't flooding chat last game. The Ocelot fans are not out yet. And they, they, they're one zero up, guys. Come on. This is the time to support your guy and their team. I do find it's a bit sad, though, that everyone refers to G2 as Ocelot's team when you well, have such amazing talent like JOL, more than Yuki, and Diode in it. Thank God Ocelot's actually decided to give his team a name and yeah. not just be lol 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 anymore because <laughs> that was... It's also called Ocelot World, I think. Yeah, well, it was Ocelot World was the brand that they took to IEM. Yeah. So yeah, at that point it was. But yeah, I, I totally agree with you. But I, I kind of felt bad casting games calling them Ocelot's team, but try saying lol lol lol, lol, or, lol. or even triple lol in a team fight. It's, it's like it, Tick, Trick and Duck. But I kind of I, I kind of feel sorry for them because it's almost like one of those bands that just has the name of the singer, even though there's like a drummer, bassist, and guitarist in as well, like Bon, bon Jovi. Jovi. Who yeah. else is it? Yeah. So wow, do you, what is that? You, you have to feel quite sad for the rest of the people in the band Very who are like, true. hey, we're we're a member of this band just as much as he is. But Jay Wow in particular. Save that to the royalty check. True. Because it probably doesn't exist that much for anybody that isn't <laughs> John Bon Jovi. True, but then again, you know, the other players here, I have to admit, I said this before on the first day, didn't know much about Yuki as an AD carry, but he has completely impressed me in this tournament. To be honest, he was uh, somewhat of an unknown before joining um, Triple Lol at the time. Um, I say somewhat unknown. He, he was kind of known for being very strong on solo queue, had been in a couple of teams that hadn't really breached uh, the successes that you can see are, are, are being reached by gamers too. And uh, it definitely has found a, a very solid place on a team packed full of talent. Yeah, full of talent, exactly, is, is the point that I was trying to make before, but... There you go. You, you kind of summarized it. It's in okay. It. Sorry. I, I, was, I, I was beating around the bush for so long, and you're like, packed full of talent. There you go. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. Well, this <laughs> this whole game is packed full of talent, actually, when you look at it. Uh, SK Prime with Ku as well. Mm -hmm. So Ku, uh, on loan, substitute, whatever you want to say, Yeah. Uh, from Cloud9 Eclipse for this series, at least. So didn't really find his footing in the last game no. as much as he has done. Um, we'll see whether he adjusts that and 
gets himself back into the game. But we've got about a minute and a half just over that of the delay period mm -hmm. left. He he performed very well on the first best of three that we casted with him in. That last game, though, definitely, I would agree. He, mm. he didn't quite find his footing. Maybe that was because of Wukong. Perhaps. Um, is, you know, he, he's very good on Lee's. We hadn't we seen before. him on Wukong yeah. yet today. Exactly. And it, we've seen him on Lee in so many times, even on Lee. I think these are more comfort picks for him, so I think he's probably going to perform extremely well. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I, 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 yeah, I agree with that completely. But about a minute left to go before we get into the game. So make sure you guys take this minute to sign up to faceit, faceit.com. Get yourself your Faceit account. And start winning points for playing League of Legends games on the competitive format, which, of course, against people your own skill level. Yes, and it's 1v1s, 3v3s, or 5v5s in CSGO, League of Legends, or Quake. So uh, plenty of ways to actually make use of those points. So if it's 1v1s you want to play, it's almost like solo queue, but your team are never going to cause you to lose. So it's against people your own skill level, and you're going to win points for it. So you're not getting LP, but you are getting points towards keyboards and mice, and you can't you're never going to get a bad player. You're never going to get a feeder on your team. I don't know you. if the League of Legends players would be able to deal with that, though, because then there would be no scapegoats. If you play like trash, guess what? You're trash. You can't then just point at the jungler and say, there's, this guy sucks. There's always a scapegoat. It's three letters. Lag. <laughs> There's always something. You, you, you've always got a reason you lost, and it's never you. Just remember that. And that's the reason why you're in bronze. And wow, not, and not challenger. Hey, Ocelot. He played poor in the first game. He admitted he played poor. Second game, he absolutely devastated. So what you're saying is I should come clean and say... Uh, if you face up to the mistakes you make, you improve as a player. All you do. I, I mean, as much as I want to joke along with this it's line, true. that's actually a very valid point. And I, yeah, I, I can't really just incite <laughs> hatred in other people <laughs> to be like, you can improve as a player if you flame yeah, everyone. Yeah. Like, no, that doesn't happen. Which, judging by some people in solo queue, seems to be the way I actually think they will improve. Dude, you've just got to work on them flame mechanics. Yeah, yeah, man. Didn't, didn't you know it's, uh, what was it, the video that Lol made? Teamwork OP. Mm. Flaming OP. Got to keep doing it. Got to keep doing it. Got to keep loading as well, because we're loading into the game. I, I'm going to kill Vince with these segues one day. Like, <laughs> I'm actually going to say something that you just, your head explodes. Like, it's all good. Oh, we're heading into the game. Oh, we're actually in the game. So let's get things underway for our grand finals here. Game number two, it's SK Prime going up against Gamers 2. Yes, it is. This could be the final game of this entire tournament, Stress. That would be quite sad. But if Gamers 2 play anything like they did last time around, that's definitely going to be the case. Mm. And it's one of those things is it would be sad for it to happen, but would also be kind of good to see Gamers 2 do that. Because I will say, Gamers 2 have looked very strong in multiple tournaments, but as yet, haven't really put that feather in their cap. Mm. That's, a, that's a good point. Very valid. And I'm sure all the Ocelot fans that are currently watching are definitely going to be cheering him and his team along here in this game. So, Gamers 2 going to be starting on purple. SK Gaming Prime on the blue side. And it looks like, again, as we've mentioned before, Trench Warfare appears to be the way forward. Yep, that line of scrimmage. That, uh, as the Americans, the Americans would say. say. Is that an American football thing? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Okay. I, I'm trying to think of a rugby equivalent, but I don't think the game line really kind of works. Because the scrim and rugby is a yeah. lot different. To the I know, I was going <laughs> to say. If it's a rugby scrim, they're just like... ARAM time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, what a surprise. We have a DC. Unfortunately, we do have a DC. Maybe that'll be back <laughs> in uh, in just a second. But, you know, we're live, so this kind of happens sometimes. And You know, you got to make sure players are on the right connection. And, uh, you know, good enough connection. Right, yeah, so definitely. It, cool. it would be a sucky final if one of the players had, like, 400 ping. And, That'd be a difficult one. And couldn't do anything. I mean, I know NA players always are like, oh, I play with 100 ping, which is the funny thing when uh, you, you see people in Twitch chat, they're like, I play with 120 ping. And I'm like, that's true, but this is uh, worth $1,500 yeah. to, uh, yeah. you know, the difference. So it's a valid point, but you really don't want to be playing on that kind of high ping. I, I used to live in uh, Lapland in Finland. We had mobile phone internet and I had 150 ping and that sucked. Really, really sucked. That explains why you're so bad at Counter-Strike. I know, definitely does. <laughs> the irony of you telling me that <laughs> is enough to choke on. 
<laughs> oh, but dear. I, I did genuinely suck when I was playing 150 ping because everything you think is happening isn't. That was quite deep. Yeah. It's not the first time I've dropped a, a bomb like that, is it? I know. I've just, like, my brain <laughs> this weekend, Vince is just some kind of prophet. <laughs> some kind of prophet. Well, I, I didn't prophesize these pauses, did I? No, but, you know, as long as you're not lost. That's uh, SK Prime going up against Gamers 2 in this best of three grand final series. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get into the game very shortly. As uh, you can see, we are in a pause currently. We definitely are in a pause. I wish that wasn't the case. I, I hope it. I, well, I wish it wasn't the case. Was it more than that? DC? Yes, this time it was more than. So we're actually onto our fourth different player that's DC'd in this game. So eventually we'll get round to ten. It's like musical disconnects rather than musical chairs. Who's, whose turn is it going to be next? I don't know, but who's going to be the winner? Because if, <laughs> if there's only one player left, then do, do you give them the whole prize money or? That should be the way we decide it. What last man standing? Yeah, or? literally last man standing in the game gets the money. But you see, screw the Nexus. Just go for that ARAM level one. So who's DC? JWoww, Ocelot, Morden, Ku. Yep. That's about it for now. So, so G2 are way behind right now. They are. They've got to be careful here. They've got hope for Daoud or Yuki. That kind of comeback win. Uh, I don't know when Morden's going to be back in this game, which is one of the problems. So I think what we're going to do is uh, head to a short break yep. as uh, we try and get some confirmation on when indeed Morden will be back. So we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with the game number two of our grand finals. Hello, ladies and gents. As you can see, we are unpaused and ready to rock and roll. First game went to Gamers 2, and we are now into the second game in this best of three grand finale. Yeah, luckily that was only a short pause. Yes. So, uh, you know, we didn't have to leave you for too long. You can still stay hyped up for our game. As, uh, you know, we, we're seeing these defensive starts once again. No lane swaps this time. That's one thing to note. I feel like we off, uh, owe more than an apology as well, because actually Mozilla that DC'd. Oh, so we we apologise, Morden. We not we weren't uh, we weren't doubting your internet connection there. I'm sure it's very strong. Yeah, well, I, you know, actually, going back to that lane swap com uh, discussion, I'm actually kind of surprised that they're not lane swapped in this game of all games. Whether it's just the fear of having it last game, Trundle does significantly better uh, at six against Shivana than he does against Renekton and. <laughs> oh, six uh, is turn. Six is, so, you know, the music has stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> there's the next disconnect. So, hopefully, this one. There we go. He's back. Okay, cool. Does that count? <laughs> Does it count, though? He's only DC'd for like the three seconds. The funny thing about this is about talking about <laughs> musical chairs is every time <laughs> yeah. there's a disconnect and it looks like it's coming back to us, our production <laughs> guys come into the studio. So, they're the ones actually playing musical chairs here. Yeah. Because we, we turn the, the lights off when we're actually casting, so we can see the monitors in front of us. Either that or just so I can't see Vince. That, that as well. It's difficult to see, like, three feet away. <laughs> you clearly don't know my vision. Oh, well. <laughs> in that case, I apologize. But even though he's reconnected, we still haven't paused. started yet. Okay. Well, okay. We'll, we'll see. We'll see <laughs> where this is going from here, because uh, <coughs> hopefully it won't be a very long pause. But, unfortunately, you're stuck with us for a couple of seconds more. Hi. Hi. Oh, God, I've got to look at Vince now. <laughs> you, you can look at yourself in the monitor we have in front of us. What do you, what do you think I've been doing for two days? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, here oh, we go. Okay. Pause. So, we are going back into Bye. game again. So <laughs> We're ready to go here for the Face It Challenger Invitational Grand Finals. And, uh, again, haven't yet made it to the three minutes, but we've uh, been in game for a little while. We have, indeed. And you, you were actually talking about um, Trundle versus Shvana yes, at the top before I was. the pause. So, uh, lane swapping uh, kind of 
is a way of getting Shivana away from a tricky Trundle lane, because Trundle at level 6 has Subjugate. Uh, when you use Dragon's Descent as Shivana, you actually double your resistances. Uh, well, double the bonus resistances from your passive, the, to put it uh, exactly. Uh, from there, you'll steal that amount more with Subjugate than on you know any other champion because of those bonuses. So it's kind of one of those things that it seems like SK are a little bit afraid to lane swap after the amount of pressure that got, that got put out into the lane by Morden in the last game. It could be, though, that Ku is wanting to focus at top lane. And one of the great things about Elise is normally a jungler is going to suffer ganking a trundle because he's going to put his pillar of filth down or pillar of ice. That's that's old school pillar of filth. Yeah. And then Elise is going to go, nope, I've got repel, and just jump over the top of it onto trundle. So it could definitely be a, an interesting mechanic that comes about in the next few minutes. Yeah, that's certainly something uh, that uh, we may end up seeing, and I would not be surprised to see that either. As uh, Typically, that is Ku's play style. It's been quite a while since I've seen Ku on Elise, actually. However, Morden's going to look for the gank in mid. Let's see whether he can actually get that. The pings have gone down, though, from both teams. So they did spot him out. Yeah, they did. And he will be backing on away instead. I am quite interested as well to see how bot lane goes here for Vandalin and Six, because Vayne, we've talked about the terror of a late game Vayne. Early game is very vulnerable. And Civi is actually quite strong early game. So you can see that reflected in the CS so far. Yeah, it's to be somewhat expected that Zvanillan will be a little bit behind early on, as you said. But it's all about that jungle pressure. We'll see whether the junglers actually favor the bottom lane or continue the tirade on the mid. It does look like Ku is headed down into that bottom lane area. So he's going to be around there just in case Morden decides to gank himself. You can get a very long, long gank off. Uh, when playing as Thresh, because you can yeah. throw the, the Dark Passage behind you, have Elise come in, and then Cocoon or Death Sentence. So that's definitely something to watch out for, and that would probably escalate forward for Vayne. In fact, flashing in with the Flay, then throwing the Dark Passage backwards, and then the Death Sentence, the Cocoon has landed on Sivir, and before that, Dai was actually flashing away. The interesting thing about that was the Dark Passage went behind Thresh, Ku actually repelled, uh, and repelled to minions, so they kind of wasted that mm. long engage tool. Um, but one thing that will do now is, now that they've seen the Dark Passage go behind, it, it's one of those things that is a psychological advantage of Thresh, is you can throw that back at any time and kind of fake again, yeah. which is something that not a lot of champions can actually do in League. The first time I ever saw that is back in Heimerdinger's Colossi Day when there's a player called Unlimited yes, playing yeah, for yeah. them. And he used to play a lot of Thrash, and he'd consistently do that, even when the jungler wasn't even yeah. there. And as soon as he threw it back, the other lane was like, okay, guys, let's back away. Yeah, and, and that's a fear that you have to have when playing against a Thrash lane. So watch for that in case that does end up happening. But looks like we're just getting some heavy trades in lane for now. A very close game overall. Here comes the gank into mid. Yes, it does. Oh, <laughs> that pause timing. <laughs> Oh, man. I would be interested to know who's disconnected off that one. Six oh. again. Oh, that's a lucky disconnect. Woohoo. Or unlucky. As the case may be, yeah. Now, we're not on LCS rules either. Mm -mm. So normally, when you guys see a pause, nobody's allowed to talk about anything. Yeah. But that's a little difficult for us to enforce. We <laughs> you know, we haven't got somebody at each of their houses. Oh, six has reconnected. <laughs> so we'll see whether we unpause now, but that was uh, that's some good timing for SK because they had some time to discuss this gank that's coming. Ku is around the area as well. He's on Wraith, yeah. Yeah, he's very close. So one repel will get him fairly close to range if he's got something to jump to. Uh, it's just a case of whether this game's going to get started again shortly and or not. On top of that as well, Exile could really bait this one out and flash back towards Wraiths mm -hmm. and then hope that Ku can repel on up over the wall and land onto Ocelot or Because it, saying that, I feel like Ocelot is too low on mana to survive through that. Uh, oh, no, we're going <laughs> straight back in. Okay, so we're going to get ready. I think Ocelot might end up dying if that's the case. Yeah, well, it doesn't even need to burn Flash. Uh, he just walks away. So. Yeah. There's us, my, trying to M Michael Bay up League of Legends with explosions <laughs> and nothing even happened. Nothing ended up happening, but that was unfortunate slash fortunate, whichever way you want to look at that. But I, I think that right there was, uh, uh, you know, SK saying we don't want to follow through, but oh, JWoww. Top lane, JWoww uh, 
Had Ignite ticking down on him, he will be fine. Didn't need to use either of his, his summoner spells, so uh, in that way he should be okay for now. Doesn't want to look around for too long, though. Both junglers are actually around Wraith Camp right now. Warden will jump onto Ku, doing quite a bit of damage right now. Which of the mid laners is going to react first? It looks like it's going to be Orianna as the ball comes across that. Oh, was a the flash camp. over the wall. Yeah, indeed it was. Shockwave comes in, and wow, Orianna dies. Double kill for Kale. And I believe that the whole time Ocelot was tanking Wraiths. Yeah, he was. He was tanking the full Wraith damage, wasn't even full health before he flashed. I really don't know what happened on that one. He must have expected to die there. Uh, that's a bit of a head scratcher. Uh, but regardless, double kill for Exile's Kale is I massive. I wonder whether he was still low on mana flashed over to shield, and then couldn't do anything else. Right, that, yeah. I mean, he could have run from wraiths, obviously, but I wonder. I do too. Because uh, he was saving mana for Shockwave. Yeah, and I d I'm not sure if Shockwave even hit. I can't it's, remember. It it's hit available. Him. It looked like he died while casting While it. casting Yeah, it. and that, that sometimes is a bug where it looks like he's casted it, but he actually hasn't. Yeah, it's uh, very close on that animation. I just yeah. realized I said, like, unlimited, a player from... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, oh, like just he unlimited. plays for Copenhagen Wolves. Just unlimited. <laughs> Everyone knows him. Yeah. But back then, no one did. I didn't want to ping you, uh, <laughs> ping you up on that one, but I'm pretty sure. Like, a player called Unlimited. Wait, everyone knows who that guy is. He's an amazing support. Oh, I see what you did there. I don't know whether you intended that. No, I didn't. Nope. <laughs> You're giving me too much credit. Either way, though, whatever happened with Orianna, the, the net result is the same. Kale is now massive and is a real threat to be reckoned with. That's a Stinger and double Doran's rings. These puns, man. I did, mean, I did mean that one. Money. I meant that one, to be fair. You're oh just shaking dear. your head. I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's been a long day. But we're in game number two of, this, of the grand final, so it's been a good day so far. We uh, may even see a game number three if SK can keep this momentum up. They yeah. are uh, nearly a thousand gold ahead. Mozilla and JWoww been trading away up in that top lane, as you'd expect from top laners in the current meta. They do like to fight. Certainly do. Two of the uh, most aggressive, I'd have to say, uh, top laners mm. in the tournament as well. So it's fitting that they both get through to the uh, the grand finale here in the Face It Challenger Invitational. But uh, bot lane, pretty stale, to be oh, fair. That's... Somewhat unfortunate for Exile. Actually, Mozilla is just going to back away. That's kind of what I expected there. Uh, a little unfortunate for Exile. He placed a pink ward right before Morden placed a normal ward in that bush. So ended up just losing the pink ward. Yeah. But the reason for placing the pink ward is they're looking to establish dragon control. Here's JOL going aggressive. There's the subjugate. There's the flash as well on top of Mozilla. Mozilla does not have flash, but is more than tanky enough to deal with that. Cocoon comes through. Nice spell shield, though. He's from Yuki. Yeah, really good spell shield there. But uh, that's what you aim to do on Trundle there is you try and duel for as long as possible without using subjugate, then hit it right as uh, you need it in that last kind of quarter to half of the health bar. And that really just gives you more damage, more uh, more survivability as well. well Ocelot's actually doing a, a pretty nice job. Shockwave comes in as well. Exile does have the uh, intervention as the camera switches to the dragon pit instead. But I would assume that Kale's going to be okay. Elise has picked up that dragon. Now Dayud does have that bullseye painted on his backside. Vanillan trying to get his way back towards his own tower. Looks to be okay for now. Is Morden going to be able to come on in here? Ku flashing through the wall after Yuki did beforehand. Vanilla now taking so much damage and does get taken out from Morden. And that was two kills overall. Three kills now for Ocelot as he picks up Ku in the jungle. Three kills in exchange for a fairly early game dragon and now they get the opportunity to put damage down on this bottom lane tower. Might end up actually coming out ahead for gamers too. Mozilla's pushing up in the top lane as well, but typically three kills for a dragon on the old patch was actually fine. Uh, that's kind of even with what you'd say, but dragon with less gold currently, uh, that's probably actually going to benefit gamers too a fair bit more. Hmm. Very, very possible. And looks like Kayla's going for the early Nash's Tooth as mm. well, has finished off the Phoenix uh, Codex. Yeah, so uh, Nash's Tooth on Kale. Once you've got that cooldown reduction, uh, typically you get blue as well on Kale. At that point, you get about uh, a third to half a second where Righteous Fury is not available. So for 
almost the entirety of the blue duration, you are a ranged auto attacker with those empowered auto attacks. Yeah. And it, also on top of that, Nash's Tooth is a huge spike in yeah. damage uh, for Kale because the attack speed is so nice with Righteous Fury. Yep. Just it firing out like a machine gun. Synergizes so well. Yeah, definitely. And that's the reason why every Kale who goes mid will, will pick up that item if they know anything about the character. Normally Lich Bane afterwards. Yes, that, that is pretty typical. Uh, which will also help out because, of course, the damage on... Um on the Q really got reduced. In, I think it was something like 0.8 to 0.5 uh, AP scaling. So Lich Bane's kind of necessary as well. Well, mid lane Ocelot is taking quite a bit of punishment right now from Exile. Has uh, forced the turn tail and run. Warden now taking quite a bit. Shockwave comes in, that's beautiful. But is it enough? Ooh. Intervention will block out that last power hit. And also the Q narrowly missing from Warden. If that Sonic Wave had hit, that would have almost certainly been a kill. The intervention would have prevented one of the deaths, but uh, it would have been enough to have picked it up. But they forced Morden back here, so this Midtown may be a little bit vulnerable for gamers too. Yep, Elise is uh, lurking around in the shadows around Wraiths right now. Knowing that Warden went back to spawn, it's the right time to count the jungle, if you know their jungle is nowhere near. Yep, exactly, and Elise is very, very good at it as well. Has uh, a lot of trading potential if she does get caught on the hunt. Well, yeah, Yuki has popped that one off. Is a level ahead of his AD counterpart. Six is absorbing most of the damage. And you can just see he's way too tanky, actually. He just was taking them like a champ. Yeah, uh, between the... Uh, the Armor he's got from the passive, from Lucian, uh, from Thresh. Yeah. I was going to say from Lucian's wife. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. dear me. I'm making... Th th wow. Lucian's not in this game, so that's not even a good joke. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the souls he'll collect will uh, add to his armor. You're just shaking your head at me here. But <laughs> it's a storyline, Vince. It They're is. not real people. But I, th I think that was so hurtful that Lucian is, is probably quite sad right now. I, I really hope he's not going to knock on my door with those light <laughs> slingers anymore. <laughs> Just culling through the door. Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, we are uh, watching Sixon's Vanilla start to deal damage to that turret. Of course, the turret lead currently in favor of gamers too as they lead this by a thousand gold. See how SK can get their momentum back because they had it to begin the game. Then kind of have stalled out a little bit. There's been some good plays by Morden in the mid lane, as with Ocelot. Shockwave again. Morden coming around from the back. Intervention's been used, but as soon as that comes down, Leeson will be diving the tower. There we go. Morden picks it up. Coup from the side. Does it get the cocoon? So much damage being exchanged between the two, but double kill for Morden. Beautiful. Really smart play by Morden there. Whether intentional or not, rather than using Sonic Wave to get into the fight like they normally would, he waited for intervention to be applied so that he would get the resonating strike after the invulnerability faded yeah. to it can, uh, make sure they got the kill. Very, very smart play of knowing how to play against Kale. Exactly. It's just waiting for that moment. Yeah, and Soon as to be honest, I don't think most junglers would have done that on Lee Sin. I think they would have gone in and just tried to deal as much damage as quickly as possible, but Morden a uh, really, really intuitive play. Knowing his limits. And uh, the limits as well of Exiles, uh, Caitlyn. Mm. Uh, Caitlyn, nice, Kale. Yeah, and I, 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 I went, mmm, <laughs> Caitlyn. <laughs> we're, we're, season, we're back in season one, Caitlyn mid, come on. Mmm, Caitlyn with intervention. That would even be a bit <laughs> wow, overpowered. that would be... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would be, yeah. Yep. Well, I'm still reeling from that Lucian's wife comment, actually. Not gonna lie. We it's, not, played. it's not the worst one I've made this it's, weekend. It's true. It definitely and that's isn't. the worst thing as well. If they could hear the things you say off camera, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be in a job. <laughs> exactly. Mid lane though, Morden is going to be jumping once again onto Exile. He's been so heavily focused this game, but also actually falls as Ku comes around from the corner trying to take revenge. Double kill this time for Exile. His second of the game now, four and one. Very important double kill there because that's going to put Exile uh, at a really big peak of damage here is he's going to start being able to itemize that Lich Bane and as soon as you have that, you have all of the tools available to Kale uh, that you really need. The turret is going to go down there and as soon as you get the Lich Bane you're going to get even more damage to turrets. I wouldn't be surprised to see this turret fall uh, in the meantime but Kale's going to become very very scary here. Yeah, well Jay Wow in the meanwhile is trying to make some plays at the top lane. I guess that's maybe why I got them mixed up, Kale and Caitlyn, because the attack speed with Nash's Tooth is basically like being an AD carry, mm. but with magic damage. Close enough. Yeah. It's 
You deal a significant amount of damage. Now, Vayne, has that Blade of the Ruined King? Is, uh, I think you were alluding to. So, Six just missed the death sentence. They're still going to get the kill anyway, but I, I thought you probably should have hit that one. Regardless, though, JWoww at the top lane is giving chase to the dragon that is Mozilla. But the dragon itself is actually just respawned, and uh, it's going to get picked up by G2, probably. That was nice and coincidental. It was. Repel came... I think Ku... No, Ku recalled, and it looked like he repelled off the map. That's... Uh, <laughs> well, it, that's the thing is, because you disappear from the map when you use repel uh, on the minimap. Yeah. So I thought he was repelling to check Dragon, but he actually was as recalling. Is that his recall animation? Elise's, is it repelling away? I think so, but what I mean is I was watching the minimap. Yeah, but I was just going to say that if that's your recall animation, how come her repel normally isn't a global... It has to fit the law, right? <laughs> I see what you're trying to say here. That would be broken. <laughs> really? <laughs> that actually would, would be broken. <laughs> I never would have thought that. I, it took me a while to figure out what you were saying there, but Vanilla and Yuki are going to trade off here. Dodge is the boomerang. Does on the hunt. Benuse as well. Does have the cavalry of Dayu there as well. Here comes a cocoon. Oh, oh holy damage. Wow. Q and Kale smashing through. Lee Sin Warden. Shockwave was used as well as we skip to the bot lane. Six taking quite a bit of damage alongside Annie. Cocoon lands again. Beautiful intervention used, and it will keep Ku alive, or will it? He smites through, and that saved his life. Oh, ho, ho, just getting that uh, extra health back there right at the end. Really, really nice play. And now Exile picks up another two kills. Now he's at six and one. And if this keeps happening, in fact, I think it's happened too much really right now to uh, contend with for uh, gamers too, because this is a Kale doing this damage without the Lich Bane fully completed. It's just Sheen Blasting Wand and the Nash's Tooth. So with Lich Bane, it's even more deadly. And look at the roam coming out from Exile here. They're looking for JWoww. They're not going to get him unless he stays. But this is a lot of damage coming from SK Prime here. That Lich Bane will be finished up in just a second. Yeah, SK Prime are bouncing back with a vengeance after that first game defeat. And uh, looking extremely strong. They've already pushed both of those mid towers, which is going to uh, free up Exile to just roam wherever he pleases. He, he could very well come to bot lane now and try and get Vayne snowballing. Yeah, that, that would be another option for them. And it's not something we've picked up on really in this game. Is Their scaling is pretty good here. I mean, I kind of expect that in the late game, the only person that's going to be able to uh, even contend with Vayne is likely to be Trundle. But even then, that's a really, really close matchup and depends on who gets a little bit more fed. Because again, Vayne is going to chunk through all that those yeah. health and resistances because it's percentage health. Yeah, then it's just a kind of a, a battle to can Trundle stick to Vayne. Yeah. And, and then even if you do stick to Vayne, intervention. Yep. Box. Exactly. It's, it's difficult to lock her down. Yeah. And that's just the longer this game goes on, that's going to be more difficult. But the problem is, uh, Kale is such a good game, uh, is such a good champion for game acceleration because of how quickly you can push down towers. Uh, the attack speed plus Lich Bane, I thought they were going to catch on there, but the attack speed plus Lich Bane plus, uh, you know, comparatively low cooldown on Reckoning means you can push towers very, very quickly. Yep, and that looks to be. Uh what the game plan here from SK Gaming Prime is, although they have been caught, Shockwave comes through. That was a pretty nice, beefy Shockwave lo locking up two players. Ku is going to be falling to Dayud, and the AD carry of Yuki got the first one. So now it looks like they're going to just congregate together and push down this bottom lane. That all stemmed from Exile moving across the two wards that are around the Dragon area. Uh, I think one of them has actually timed out now, but they caught the vision on him moving up towards mid. They knew that without Exile there, they could take that fight fairly easily. They pick up the kills from it and are trying to defend off their objectives as best as possible here as Exile was heading towards uh, that middle inhibitor tower. But Gamers 2 may have done enough to close the gap in this game. Only 300 gold sits between these two teams, but that Kale is very strong. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, what do you think is going to be next on the cards for Kale? Maybe Rabadon's Death Cap? Uh, typically, it tends to be Rabadon's or some kind of Void Staff or an item along that kind of extra burst potential kind of route. I expect it's probably going to be um, Sorcerer Shoes yeah. uh, as a minor item between there. But typically, it, it tends to be like a Rabadon's. Right. Well, you can see the game is two and now starting to push this top lane. All five players, actually, on the top half of the map. Uh, Oriana going around to what, the white race. This is incredibly risky. Morden 
very nearly died. In fact, they ignite. Maybe enough. No, it won't be. Mozilla is now being chased down by Diode, Yuki, and Jay. Wow, they will get that kill. They'll Yuki lose an inhibitor, hit, though. And they will indeed lose that mid inhib. It, well, uh, it depends whether they can push in in time. They should have the damage. They're at least getting the turret here because Ocelot... Oh, no, they're chasing him. Uh, this is what you were talking about before. They did land a death sentence, but the cavalry has came in. Shockwave was cancelled with the death. And now Ku is taking quite a bit of damage. Intervention has been used. Just delaying the inevitable have to feel. Or is it because the Dark Passage comes out to the rescue of Elise? On the hunt has been popped as well from Yuki. Big boomerang blade damage. Six has been stunned. All dogpiling on top of him. Trying to secure this kill. But Yuki in the front line is taking so much punishment from Kale. They now turning back around. That should be a double kill coming into effect very shortly. There's the tumble to turn that one up. And it's kind of fortunate for them that Gamers 2 chased that out of their base because really SK Prime had no need to go in on Ocelot. They could have easily taken Inhibitor Turret because Inhibitor Turrets are almost... Well, no, they are the most difficult turrets in the game to take. They are so difficult to breach in the current meta that getting one for free like that is an incredibly large advantage regardless of whether you use it straight away or take a little time to get that Inhibitor. But they chase Ocelot, didn't get the turret. Thankfully for SK, they got a few kills off that. But the inhibitor turret is worth far more than three kills at this point in the game. Yeah, I think I was a bit too uh, antsy saying that they'd probably get the inhib. That probably may not have been on the yeah, cards, well, but I they should have got the tower. I thought they would have. Yeah. Because they've got Lich Bane Kale, they have a Vein that already had Blade of the Rune King and a Zeal, and could and should have at least pushed that tower, the tower. and maybe yeah. got damage onto the inhib I as was, well. I was sure they'd take the tower. Yeah. I thought they'd just see Ocelot for what he was, and that's a decoy there in that situation. Like yeah. a, a dangling the bait. Because again. as long as they split up there, Ocelot can't shockwave them, and he'll never deal with all of them before they take the turret. But nevertheless, we are playing with the cards we're dealt here yeah. as uh, SK do still have a slight lead here. 400 gold. Very, very slight lead. And uh, SK Gaming Prime, about 10 minutes ago, were looking in charge of this game. So again, Gamers 2 are just making themselves a factor in this game. They refuse to lose. They refuse to go down without a fight. And that's dangerous because Gamers 2 are a team that we've seen in the past week in two very desperate situations, far worse than this game, yeah. drag it out and win in the late game. This game doesn't favor them so much to do that because they don't have a Jax and they're against a Vayne, but they've got the capabilities as a team of doing that. So, will we see that happen or will SK remain in control? Well, that is definitely a question that we're gonna see the answer to shortly, I have to feel, because they're now pressuring this bottom tower. But Pressuring is the optimum word. They haven't taken it down just yet. Mozilla and JWoww are going at it in the jungle. And is it feasible they can pick up this tower if the entirety, uh, barring JWoww, is down there defending the, the turret itself? To some extent. They've got decent wave clear with um, Kale oh, and tower pushing with Kale. The problem is they're against supreme wave clear. See, if it pops on the hunt, yeah. they're not going to be able to chase this without a flash tibbers, which won't be available because the distance is too far. So it's good enough to chase them out. Uh, they have decent tower pushing. The problem is Sivir clears the wave far too fast to push in there, regardless of how many people you've got. You re require a big commit in behind the turret to actually start taking that down. That was an optimistic on the hunt. The good news is it's a very low cooldown yeah. ultimate, so it's, I it's actually, worth throwing out there. Yeah, I think it was fine in that situation yeah. because rather than sitting there and just taking time and letting SK dictate, that's gamers too saying, we're going to play our own game. You are going to back away from this turret or we will kill you. Yeah, definitely. Again, it's, it's putting that fear and that doubt in the back of SK mm. Prime's mind, saying, if we do stay on for too long, we risk, we run the risk, I should say, of JWoww and Sivir just jumping on top of us, and then the Ocelot ultimate coming in. And the other problem there is, if you're SK, you don't want to be sitting in front of a tower that you can't take down, because you're giving Sivir free farm. Yeah. Vayne is not getting free farm at that point, if that is the case. They're very close on CS currently, three kills to two kills. They're very close in, in gold from the, the laning phase. and There is a little bit more global gold on the side of SK in the towers. Uh, and it, it's one of those things that just giving your lane opponent uh, free farm in a situation like that because you're pushing in uh, is not desirable. 
And uh, again, it's, it's interesting to see how different veins build. I think it's one of the uh, most juxtaposed characters for AD in the game that there's so many different items that are built for her mm. and changes. We saw earlier Cedrion took a, I believe it was a static shift second, yeah. and now we're seeing that Vanillan is taking the uh, the Phantom Dancer. Yeah, it's all about the second item. It, it, they, they fulfill the same role from attack speed, but mm. you know it, it's just that different choice of whether you want the wave clear, whether you want the movement. It, you know, it's all... Uh, and juxtaposed is the word I was looking for. Yes, it was. Because mm. England. England. N1 Englando. Yeah. Uh, SK pushing up towards the top lane. Don't really feel it. They've pinged Baron. That would be ambitious. That would be very ambitious. It would. Bane is doing a lot of damage and would uh, would cut through Baron pretty oh, fast. Yeah. The, they the have... danger is that they could then get collapsed on. Yeah. And they're against an Orianna. That's, that's never a good sign. They have a really good Baron clear with uh, Blade of the Ruin King, Vayne. Uh, Kale has significant damage as well. So they can take down Baron pretty quickly. And of course, the percentage health damage that Elise is going to do. Never forget that in a, a Baron situation. Yeah. But they're going to clear it out. I'm glad they're not starting it yet. saying that. I think a little bit of miscommunication there. Uh, Mozilla trying to run interference with the rest of the team on uh, Gamers 2 right now. There's the Only Hunt again. Yuki taking point. Ku's taking quite a bit of damage. He's going to be landing any second now. Nice start passage. Six goes in. And meanwhile, into the fray. Didn't even get to use box. That could prove to be critical. Shockwave landing on Exile and also Mozilla. Lots of oh. damage in the process. Big chunking there. Lee Sin gets the kill on Kale. Vayne is now running rampant through onto Yuki, gets the double kill. Morden and Dude on the south side here next to the Wraith camp. Not too sure if they're going to be able to make a play. And there's the strength of Zvanillan's 2-1 uh, and one vein, even though 2-1 and one doesn't sound that good. Had Blade of the Rune King, had Phantom Dancer, and was just able to clear up that fight even after Exile dropped. And uh, SK probably don't have the position here to do Baron just because of how low Ku is, but they've Got in a position that they are comfortable in this game and uh, are going to head back and buy. And that's going to breathe huge confidence into Vanilla right now after that last fight. Yeah. That he realizes, okay, I'm, I'm at that stage now where Vayne is a real threat. And it's going to get worse for the four gamers too the longer this game goes on because Vayne's going to keep picking up kills, picking up farm. And unless you can shut her down, that's pretty difficult to deal with in these fights. Yeah, because the reason we said before is there's so much peel for Vayne. Mm. There's, there's so many ways to keep Vayne alive, so many ways to keep Vanilla in the fight for as long as possible. Box, intervention, at least can run interference as well with the, the cocoon. And then you've just got Shivana who's going to be diving their AD carry. So they have to be caught in two minds. Do we go for Vayne or do we protect Zivin? Yeah, and Vayne was about to recall. They've just picked up Dragon. Uh, clearly is a little bit of gold short because went to white. I wonder what this is going to buy. Last Whisper is likely, unless it's finishing the defensive item. There's the Last Whisper. Um, so yeah, he was very, very short. Was uh, clearing up the top wave, actually started recalling and realized he was short on money. So, has now got a Last Whisper. That means the damage we've seen Vayne do is about to become even greater. Yes, Phantom Dancer is... It's the point, I think, where Vayne turns from being scary into absolutely terrifying. Mm -hmm. Next item will very likely be a Quicksilver Sash, I'd yes. imagine. Yep. Or potentially uh, GA. Because when I look at it, actually, you've only really got one character that's going to deal a lot of CC, and that's Annie. You and can't QSS out of a shockwave. We've talked about Guardian Angel a couple of times, and yep. how typically, if you're the only one alive at the end of a team fight, you kind of die a lot. However... If you're alive at the end of a team fight after you've had intervention on you and you're a vein with tumble and the ability to escape and kite and duel just about anybody, if the if whoever is alive on the opposition team is very low, you can very quickly clean that fight up. Yeah. Flash tip is on Coot, who is uh, lurking around in the shadows. Star passage again coming to the aid from six. But Vayne, look at Vayne's positioning right now, way down towards bottom lane, just going past the red buff now, or where it would be spawning if it was alive. And it's still a long, long way. The question is, can SK Prime keep them off Baron long enough? Yes, they can. They can. They've spotted Vayne on the way across, so uh, I wonder how much health is that Baron on? They took it down Less to half, half health, yep. so... That could have been a free start there for SK. This is very smart, though. Vayne's already in that middle lane, pushing through. 
maybe they're going to get the job done that they were looking to earlier. It's a little risky, but Mozilla can tank this up when they know Vanillan has enough damage to fight this. Gamers 2 are actually going to let this go and go the long way around to their base. Let's see if it pays out for them. The uh, Q does land from Vanilla and onto Vanilla, and I should say, from Elysian. Ocelot's taking the brunt of the damage. You'll be falling to thrash of all characters. JWAL now trying to turn this one back around. Gets Cocoon. Yuki's taking so much punishment right on the back lines, but Moomerang Blade goes through, doesn't land onto anybody, and that's going to be the inhibitor falling. Do you think they're going to go back and pick the Baron? Uh, they, they're going back, certainly. They could get Baron if they chose to. They're going to clear out buffs. You can see okay. the pings have gone down. But I think playing this smart would be the best yeah. course of action because Gamers 2's uh, reaction here would be if they didn't want to have that Baron dance again, they'd have to go and do Baron very quickly. And I don't feel like they've got the damage to do that. So SK know that they can stall this out for another Baron dance with the inhibitor down is considerably easier for them this time around. Yeah. So, yeah, smart play. Safe you know, again, once again from SK Prime, uh, taking the blue buff, clearing out some of those creeps as well in the jungle. And now XL's going to pick up his own blue. And I think one of the reasons why they can be so confident that the opposition of G2 don't have the damage to kill Baron is because Vayne was a bot, mm -hmm. managed to come up to Baron, and it was only 50% the way through done. Yeah, that uh, Quicksilver Sash was the item of choice on Vayne. Oh, okay. Well. So, yeah. gold starty. I did Netflix. second guess myself though, and then I said it's only Annie you have to really deal with. And that's a big stun though. Although, actually, no, I'm, I'm looking at it wrong. Blade of Luring King and Randwood's Omen mm. can also be cleansed out of. So. Yep, that's uh, a really good point. But are they, are they, have they attempted this Baron? Yeah, they are taking Baron down at the side as well. Ku from the backside is being taken out very quickly by Yuki. I will be jumping oh. back on. Oh, Elise goes down, so that's not going to be Smite any longer on the playing field, but neither is Mordens. He's been taken out. Double kill right now for Kale. Exile is going huge. There's the villain from the side taking a kill from his own, and that will be a triple kill for Kale. A five for one trade in SK Prime's favor. This is probably going to be game. And they only got Ku because the Baron was aggroed at the same time, so pretty much uh, a five for one with the assist going to Baron in that. That will be the game here. They've got too much clear and too much tur turret damage with this uh, Kale and Vayne being so fed in this game. That is going to be an even series here as SK Gaming Prime even things up. One game apiece in our best of three grand finals against Gamers 2. That means we're going to a game number three. A fitting end for this tournament, I have to say. Yes. Third game, decisive matches are always the best ones to cast and the best ones to watch. These two teams have shown throughout this tournament they're very evenly matched as well. Yeah, and I cannot wait for game number three. That's going to come up very shortly as uh, we get all the players into the game. We will be back in just a couple of minutes here for the Face It Challenger Invitational number two, sponsored by Overwolf.